Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is James Boyle. I am the planning director at Sacramento Regional Transit and I am the project manager for Sac RT Ford. And I'm James Drake. I'm principal planner with Regional Transit and uh, one of the key participants in the project. So today what we would like to show you are the draft proposed bus networks that we have been able to design over the past few months. We've been very busy holding pop-up events, public presentations, uh, hosting websites, just getting feedback from our riders and from the general public on transit in Sacramento. And we've gotten a lot of feedback, and today um, we're excited to show you some of what we've put together. Um, but before we go to that, I would like to just talk a little bit about our existing bus network and about the project. This project focuses on our fixed route bus service. So we're talking about 41 fixed route buses. This does not include express buses or special trippers or contracted services. And so today, James will go through a route by route description of the bus routes and what we are proposing uh, would be changed. Again, it's the 41 bus route system, so there's quite a few uh, bus routes to go through. Some bus routes will change, some will not. But what we believe what we're proposing is uh, better for our system. We've heard from the community about our bus system. We've heard from the community that they would like to see a more consistent bus network. They would like to see uh, you know, bus routes that run seven days a week, Monday through Sunday service. They would like to see more weekend service and that people would like to see maybe even later evening service. So we've taken all those comments, we've taken the feedback and we have um, what we're proposing today for you is our draft network. So I'm going to turn it over to James and James will go through uh, each of the routes in more specific detail. Thank you. We're very pleased to be able uh, in this video to go over in a little more detail what's changing on some of these routes and in some cases uh, why we proposed what we did. Uh, we're going to be using a mapping software called Remix, which was a big important part of this project. It's an online web-based tool that we use to help design our routes. Um, and while we're doing that, there's a few color codes that we'll use throughout the presentation. Um, any routes that uh, appear in red uh, are routes that run frequently every 15 minutes or more. Uh, dark blue routes run every 30 minutes. Light blue is used to indicate routes that are every 40 to 45 minutes. Um, light green is used for hourly routes. And then you may see routes in pink, and that indicates routes that just run uh, peak hours only. Our first route is Route 1, and the map you're looking at is the existing system. Route 1 runs on Auburn Boulevard and Greenback Lane primarily, and there actually are not any changes to Route 1, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, our next several routes are all in the Land Park and Greenhaven area, and the first one I'm going to talk about is Route 2. And I'm going to zoom in here so we can see this area a little better. Route 2, and again, this is the existing system. Uh, route 2 runs primarily on Riverside Boulevard, and in the new system, Route 2 would actually be eliminated except for three peak hour trips. Uh, we basically get a lot of ridership on a few morning trips into town on Route 2 and a, few, a lot of ridership on a few afternoon trips. But otherwise, we don't get a lot of ridership on Route 2. Uh, so that's why we're proposing to eliminate the regular daytime service. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to Route 6, which is a similar route. Route 6 runs north-south on Land Park Drive. And like Route 2, it goes into the Pocket and Greenhaven area. And Route 6 has a very similar ridership pattern. We have very strong ridership going into town in the morning and going out of town in the afternoon, but lower ridership um, during the day. So all we're really going to be doing with this route is keeping those busy morning and afternoon trips, and the other trips will be discontinued. Um, one other thing to mention is that the route numbers will change for Route 2 and Route 6. Uh, we usually use 100s for all of our uh, peak-only routes. So 
Route 2 will become Route 102, and Route 6 will become Route 106. Next, I'm going to talk about Routes 3 and 7. Route 3 uh, is another route that goes from Greenhaven um, and picks people up and expresses into downtown via I-5. And there's no changes proposed to Route 3. And similarly, uh, Route 7 is another peak-only route. Um, and there also will be no changes to Route 7. Although, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, because these are peak-only routes, we are going to change the route numbering. So Route 3 will become Route 103, and Route 7 will become Route 107. The next route I want to talk about is Route 11. And in the current system, Route 11 does not serve the Greenhaven or Land Park neighborhoods. Route 11 runs uh, primarily on Truxell Road in North Natomas. And again, thus far we've just looked at the existing system, but I'm going to flip now to the new system. This map shows the new system, and I'm going to highlight Route 11. As you can see in the new system, uh, Route 11 would have the same route structure through Natomas, um, but it would be extended south through downtown where it cur currently terminates um, into Upper Land Park and over to Sac City College. I'm going to zoom in. And you can see as I zoom in that in the new Route 11, the bus would continue through downtown um, via 7th Street, 8th Street, the 9th Street corridor. And it would continue down Riverside Boulevard um, and go to Sac City College via Sutterville Road. Um, so this is um, not only a change in the routing, but we're also going to be adding Sunday service to Route 11. Um, and so overall, for residents uh, in the Land Park and uh, South Land Park area, um, although the hourly service on routes 2 and 6 that I mentioned earlier will be discontinued, there will be new hourly service, um, or excuse me, there will be new service running about every 40 to 45 minutes on Route 11, and it will also have seven day a week service, which is something we don't currently have um, in the Land Park neighborhood. So the next route I'm going to talk about is Route 13, and this is a route that's in North Sacramento, and I'm going to skip back to the existing system first. I'm going to zoom into North Sacramento, and the existing Route 13 runs just on weekdays, and it has hourly service, as you can see by the green color code. And Route 13 has not been a terribly strong route for us. Um, the new routing is going to be a little different this map shows the new routing, and I'm going to highlight Route 13. As you can see in the new routing, um, the service north of San Juan Road and north of Interstate 80 will be discontinued. I'll jump back to the existing network so that's clear. In the existing network, um, we run north of I-80 in an area that's primarily industrial, and ridership here has tended to be pretty poor for us. In the new network, um, We'll continue the same service on Northgate Boulevard, uh, but we'll have a new routing via San Juan Road um, and then up Truxell Road and then over to Del Paso Road in North Natomas. And so this will do a couple key things for us. Um, one, it will give residents um, on Northgate Boulevard, for example, uh, It'll continue their direct access to the shopping center, including the Walmart on Truxell Road. But, um, and it will also give um, some new coverage to us for the area west of I-5, which you can see here. Um, we think this will be a good change. Another reason is if you look at the population density, which we can see here from our remix map, the new route on 13, by having it take uh, San Juan Road and going over to Truxell, 
we capture a lot more people on that route who live uh, in apartments in and along Truxell Road and we capture uh, two different high schools on this new routing. So we think this will be a better route for ridership and it'll also be a more frequent route. This will run seven days a week. On weekdays we'll have uh, service about every 45 minutes and it'll be similar on weekends. So the next route I'm going to talk about is Route 15. I'm going to go back to the existing network. Today's Route 15 runs every 30 minutes. Um, we get pretty good ridership on Route 15. It's a very popular route. It has a few key destinations. Uh, at the north end, it hits the Watt 80 light rail station. At its midpoint, it hits the Arden Del Paso light rail station. And then it continues into downtown and provides service along Richards Boulevard. Uh, although this is a very popular route, the main issue with this route is that it's somewhat redundant with the light rail system because um, from Arden Del Paso, the rest of the way into downtown, um, riders can just as easily take the light rail system with a quick transfer to light rail. And so in the new network, Route 15 would be shortened and we would serve only the area between Arden Del Paso and Watt I-80 light rail station. This, this would serve the main ridership base in North Sacramento. Um, customers going into downtown would transfer to light rail. And, uh, this won't be uh, perfect for all of our customers, but we think this is a good use of resources. Um, I'd also want, like to point out that along Richards Boulevard, there is service from Route 11, which, as I mentioned earlier, will have seven-day-a-week service now. Uh, one of the key destinations here is the Greyhound Station on Richards Boulevard, so customers will be able to reach that seven days a week with Route 11. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 19. Route 19, in the existing system, is a very long hourly route. It does run seven days a week. Uh, the primary market for Route 19 is that it provides service into and out of Rio Linda, but it also provides local service um, both in North Sacramento along uh, Norwood Avenue as well as on Watt Avenue um, where it runs a straight north-south shot on Watt Avenue. Um, the main issue with this route is that there's a lot of time and mileage spent on this connection here and there's very little ridership because this is primarily a rural area and I'll show the population density again as you can see here the lighter colors indicates that there's very little population here in the new network we would be cutting back Route 19 uh, so that it ran only north-south on Norwood Avenue primarily and up to the town of Rio Linda and back. And the service that's currently provided by Route 19 on Watt Avenue would be provided by other routes which would actually run more frequently than the service today. Uh, the new Route 19 would still run all seven days a week but the frequency on it would be better because we're running a shorter route we'll be able to run it every 45 minutes approximately, which in any given day means another five to six trips in each direction. So I'm now going to uh, change areas a little bit to uh, the north and northeast area. Our next route is Route 21. And in the existing system, Route 21 is a major north-south route running primarily on Sunrise Boulevard and on Coloma Road in Rancho Cordova. The changes to Route 21 are pretty minimal. The routing itself will not change at all. In the new network you can see it's the same dark blue color indicating 30-minute service. But what we will be doing is uh, adding some trips and adding some coverage on this route. In the current system, uh, not all of the trips 
run north of Sunrise Mall. Sunrise Mall is kind of a focal point and transfer point for the route. And some of the service doesn't run north of Sunrise Mall. In the new system, um, all the trips will go the entire length of the route. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 22. And it's shown here in the existing system. And in the new system, Route 22 would be discontinued. Um, the main reason for that is that in the new system, uh, the entirety of this route will be covered by other routes. Today it's uh, just an hourly route, and in the new system, the service here will be covered by other routes and will be more frequent. And I'll talk about that a little more with Route 68 when we get there. Uh, so the next route that we'll talk about will be Route 23. And again, this is the existing system. Route 23 is one of our longer routes. It runs every 30 minutes from Arden Del Paso Light Rail Station to Sunrise Mall with a lot of stops along the way. Uh, El Camino is the major corridor that it runs on, as well as Fair Oaks Boulevard through Carmichael. And the main issue we saw with Route 23, it's a very popular, very productive route, but it's a very difficult route to run reliably because it's so long, it has so many stops, and it has so many riders. So what we've set out to do in the new route is to shorten the route a little bit and simplify it. So the new Route 23, as you can see, does not run all the way to Sunrise Mall. It does have the same inbound terminal at Arden Del Paso Light Rail Station, and it still serves uh, El Camino Avenue and Sunrise Mall. We did make one minor change. Um, in the Arden Arcade area on the existing Route 23, excuse me, in the existing Route 23, the bus stops are situated on Ethan Way. And in the new network, that service would be relocated to Howe Avenue. And the main purpose for this is to provide us a little extra mileage along Arden Way to get to more shopping destinations um, at the corner of Arden and Howe. The main changes on the route, however, are more in the northeast area of the route. And I'm showing here again the new Route 23. And what you see here is that from El Camino Avenue, the route would go up Fair Oaks Boulevard and then it would continue along Manzanita Avenue, make a left on Madison, and then make a left on Auburn, and then turn south onto College Oak Drive. And its new terminal would be at American River College. And American River College tends to be a really popular destination for us, and it's also where we have other frequent routes that, can, 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 that converge. The next route in the sequence is Route 24, but I want to skip ahead briefly to Route 25 because the changes on Route 25 interrelate with Route 23. Um, in the existing system, Route 25 runs primarily on Marconi Avenue, and it also provides kind of long distance service from light rail, in this case from the Marconi light rail station, all the way out to Sunrise Mall in Citrus Heights. And in addition to Marconi Avenue, it provides major north-south service on uh, Fair Oaks Boulevard and Manzanita Avenue. And it also provides service to Mercy San Juan Hospital, which is situated um, in the vicinity of Madison Avenue. In the new network, Route 25 would also have pretty major changes, um, although it would serve some of the same destinations. As you can see here in the new network, Route 25 would continue to uh, originate at the Marconi Light Rail Station and serve Marconi Avenue, but it would have a new north-south route. Um, instead of being on Fair Oaks Boulevard 
and Manzanita Avenue, it would take Walnut Avenue north to American River College, and that's the segment you see here. And so this provides um, an additional route with direct service into American River College. We have a problem with our network today in that um, we have a number of routes in the Carmichael area that don't really provide any direct service to American River College. So we set out in the new network to rectify that. And as you can see, both the new Route 25 and the new Route 23 both have direct service to American River College while still maintaining um, fairly long, straight, direct service on major corridors. So on the new Route 25, going north from American River College, the route would make a few turns and go by Mercy San Juan Hospital on Coyle Avenue like it does today. Uh, but then the new route would go north on Dewey Drive and then continue on to Auburn Boulevard and Citrus Heights. And it would go north on Auburn Boulevard all the way to the county line where we have our transfer point with Roseville Transit at the Lewis and Orlando Transfer Center. And this is going to create, uh, this is going to make Route 25 more of a centrally located route in the city of Citrus Heights. And we think this will also um, help fit our service levels to where the population is. I'll show you again in our population layer that the new route for 25 goes through these darker red areas where there's more people. And in the existing network, we can see from the population layer that a lot of our service goes through the Fair Oaks area where not only is the population density lower, but if we look at uh, income levels, in this map, the darker purple indicates areas that are lower income. And you can see from this map that in the current system, we run 30-minute service through uh, what's really kind of a higher income area, which doesn't have as much demand for transit typically. And what we've tried to do in the new network is to fit the service uh, in a better way to where uh, we have more low-income households that are more likely to use or need transit. So the new 23, the new 25, and the new 93, which I'll get to later. These are designed to go more through lower income, uh, higher demand neighborhoods. So I skipped over Route 24, but I want to go back to Route 24. In the existing system, Route 24 is an hourly route that does a one-way loop um, eastbound on Madison Avenue and westbound on Greenback. And this has always been a lower ridership route for us. In the new network, Route 24 will be discontinued. Um, that impact is offset by the fact that we are now running uh, Smart Ride microtransit service in this area. And we've seen uh, strong and growing ridership on our Smart Ride service here. So we think that um, based on the ridership we've had on Route 24, that Smart Ride, Dial a Ride service is probably a better fit for this area than fixed route service that we have today with Route 24. So the next route I'm going to talk about is Route 26. Route 26 in today's system runs every 30 minutes. Um, it serves primarily uh, the Fulton Corridor with uh, its southern terminal being the University 65th Street Light Rail Station with uh, a key stop at the Watt I-80 Light Rail Station and with continuing service north on Watt Avenue into McClellan Air Force Base and McClellan Park. In the new network Route 26 would have the same route structure uh, 
along Fulton, but the service into McClellan Park would be discontinued and we would instead be continuing the route north on Watt Avenue. So in the new system, Route 26 becomes a major route for us, uh, providing service every 30 minutes uh, on these major corridors, Watt Avenue and Fulton. Um, and I'll get, later in the presentation, I'll skip to Route 84, which is the other part of our major Watt Avenue service. But for now, um, the main thing to know about Route 26 is that we'd be extending it and making it a major route with seven day a week service. The next route I'm going to cover is Route 28. You can see in the existing system, Route 28 is an hourly route uh, running primarily north-south on Fair Oaks Boulevard in the town of Fair Oaks and continuing south and providing service in Rancho Cordova along the Zinfandel Corridor north of uh, Highway 50 as well as uh, continuing farther south down Folsom Boulevard uh, as far as the Butterfield Light Rail Station with service to the Rancho Cordova Library and Franchise Tax Board. In the new network, Route 28 would be eliminated. However, um, customers that use Route 28 in the Fair Oaks area, um, they would have Route 21 as an alternative. Um, not all of those riders would be within walking distance, but we would hope to capture many of those riders on Route 21. In the Rancho Cordova area, the service on Zinfandel Drive uh, would be discontinued, but uh, most of these destinations we think are within reasonable walking distance, either of Route 21 or of light rail, which is shown here in red. And then lastly, the service on Route 28 that continues south on Folsom Boulevard uh, to Butterfield Light Rail Station. This service uh, would be continued, but on a different route. And you can see more about that when I talk about Route 74. So the next route I'm going to discuss is Route 29. Route 29 is a peak only route that's used primarily by commuters to get into downtown from Carmichael. And there won't be any changes to Route 29. We have uh, good ridership on Route 29. It's a productive route for us and a popular route. We will be changing the numbering from 29 to 129. The next route I'm going to discuss is Route 30, which is uh, a frequent route we run downtown, primarily along J and L Street. Uh, and there won't really be many changes to Route 30. Um, it's a popular line for us. Um, in the new network, there will be one minor change, and that is that the downtown routing will be simplified a little bit. And I'm showing the new network here. As you can see, uh, this is the eastbound, or I'm sorry, the westbound route, which goes west along L Street. Uh, its last stop will be on northbound 3rd Street. Um, the eastbound route will pick up from there and go directly east on J Street. I'll show you the existing route. And if we zoom in on Route 30, you can see that the existing westbound route makes several turns and goes up to the Amtrak station. And the eastbound route begins at the Amtrak station and makes several turns and goes east. The reason we're changing this route and simplifying it is because uh, all those little turns add miles and time, and time is money in transit. Uh, so we think that by simplifying the route, this will deliver faster and more reliable service, and it'll give us resources that we can use on other routes where we have uh, more urgent needs for service, where there otherwise might not be a route at all. Okay, our next route is Route 33, which is shown here in orange. Today this runs every 20 minutes, and it's a very short distance shuttle route that primarily goes from the Alkali Flat Light Rail Station to the Richards Boulevard area. And in the new network, uh, Route 33 would be discontinued, and this is primarily because of redundancy with other nearby routes. 
Um, most of the destinations near Route 33 are within walking distance. And then, as you saw in the new network, we'll have seven day a week service on Route 11, um, which takes people up to Richards Boulevard. The next route in the system is Route 34, which is shown here in the existing system in green. This is an hourly route. Uh, this route has had pretty good ridership for us on peak trips, uh, going into downtown in the morning and coming out of downtown in the afternoon. But other than that, ridership has been pretty low. So what we're proposing for this route is just to discontinue the off-peak trips and change the number to 134, and we would continue to run those popular trips in the morning and the afternoon. Um, we do have one other route change that would happen, not immediately, but in the near future. Uh, the former hospital site in East Sacramento that's been rebuilt, um, this kind of circuitous part of the route will be realigned to go more directly this way. But otherwise, uh, the routing and stops would be unchanged. We just would be running it less often. Uh, the next route to discuss is Route 38. This is another route that's primarily in downtown. The existing route's shown here. It goes from uh, University 65th Street Station west along Broadway, past UC Davis Medical Center, uh, through downtown, primarily via P and Q Streets. And then it has this extra loop uh, south of town to uh, housing and residential areas south of Broadway. Uh, Route 38 would be discontinued in the new network and that's primarily due to um, competition or redundancy with other nearby routes. Uh, route 51, which is shown here in red, is a frequent route and serves many of the same destinations. And then you also have in red here, uh, this is the Gold Line light rail and it's a very parallel route to Route 38. So a lot of our Route 38 riders um, have already essentially left Route 38 and are taking light rail instead. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 47, which is a south area route. This is the existing Route 47. And Route 47 is another route that would be discontinued. Um, the primary reason is that what we sought to do with the new network is to simplify the network um, and focus on major corridors. So um, I'll jump to the new network. In the new network, you can see that the south area in general has a more simplified route structure compared to the existing network. And in both the existing and the proposed network, we have major corridors on Florin Road and on Meadowview Road, as well as light rail. Um, up and down essentially the Franklin Corridor. And what we've sought to do in the new network is essentially to uh, focus our resources on major routes. Route 47 today runs only hourly. Uh, it has no evening service and no weekend service. And what we're essentially doing is taking the resources from Route 47 and using those to make the other nearby routes uh, have a little later hours of service or run more frequently during the week or on weekends. So the next route we'll talk about is Route 51. The routing for Route 51 is unchanged. Um, it's a frequent route today on weekends, and I'm sorry, on weekdays. And on weekends, we'll, all we're doing is we're changing the frequency a little bit. Um, we already have some 20 minute frequency on Saturdays. We'll be adding more hours of 20 minute frequency on Saturdays. And on Sundays, we'll also be improving the frequency to every 20 minutes from uh, every 30 minutes today. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 54, which is shown here in uh, green, which is an hourly route. It, has, it also has really uh, not much evening service and no weekend service at all. Um, the ridership is mostly based on school riders, either to college or high school. And Route 54 is proposed to be eliminated. Um, and most of the service area will be covered by other routes. Um, I'll talk later about Route 67, which we're extending south to partially cover Route 54. And uh, the area east of Highway 99 
we plan to be covering with our Smart Ride dial ride service. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 55. The existing Route 55 does have seven day a week service. It runs every 30 minutes on weekdays. Um, the new Route 55 will be similar but will undergo some changes as well as an extension. You can see on the new map that in the new system Route 55 would have a simplified route structure on its eastern part. I'll go back to the existing so you can see the difference. As you can see in the existing system, it's a pretty circuitous route. And we've set out in the new network to make the route a little more straight and direct. But the main thing we've done is we've also extended it west on Florin Road, um, all the way across South Sacramento into the Green Haven area. And I'll talk in a little bit about Route 81, which also operates on the Florin Corridor. In the new network, um, both the 55 and the 81 would be on Florin, and they would alternate with one another to provide frequent headways uh, combined. So the next route I'm going to talk about is Route 56 in the new network. It's shown here, and it's very similar to the existing Route 56. The existing Route 56 is a major east-west route running primarily on Meadowview Road. Uh, the eastern end goes to Cosumnes River College and major hospitals in the southeast area. And the western end is the part that will change. If you look at the western end of the route today, we run along Rush River Drive to our bus terminal, which we call the Pocket Transit Center, where it meets a couple other routes. In the new system, uh, the 56 would be mostly the same on most of the route, but at the western end, instead of going along Rush River Drive, we would go north on Greenhaven Drive to uh, the new terminal, which would be at uh, Florin Road and Greenhaven Drive. And I'll talk a little more about that with some of the upcoming routes, such as 61 and 62, but what we'll have there is uh, a transit center that has a bigger variety of routes from which customers can transfer to and from. Our next route that we'll talk about is Route 61. The existing Route 61 primarily serves the Fruit Ridge Road corridor. It's an hourly bus with no weekend service. And uh, it's been a long-standing complaint that we lack any uh, weekend service on this route and that 60-minute uh, headways are not adequate. The ridership on the route is fairly strong, but um, it's always been kind of a cost ineffective route for us. Um, our cost per passenger is a little higher than we'd like. And that's primarily because the eastern end of this route goes through uh, areas that are more industrial and lower density with lower ridership demand. So in the new route, we will be discontinuing uh, the service east of 65th Street. You can see in the new network that the service east of 65th Street um, on Florin Perkins Road and on Fruit Ridge Road and on Folsom Boulevard has been discontinued. Um, and uh, freeing up that mileage it partly allows us to run the route more frequently. So the new route would, have, would go from 60 minutes to every 30 minute frequency. And we'd also add weekend service, both Saturday and Sunday and holiday service, all of which would run every 40 minutes. Um, I don't want to forget the western end of the route, which you can see compared to the existing route, also undergoes some changes. Um, what you can see from the existing system map shown here is that the existing Route 81 provides the service on Florin Road um, throughout the Pocket Greenhaven area, all the way to uh, Kennedy High School and Riverside Boulevard. And in the new network, it will be Route 61 providing that service. So the new 61 will go from uh, Fruit Ridge Road and take 35th Avenue and 43rd Avenue into Riverside Boulevard and down Florin Road to our new terminal at Florin and Greenhaven. The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 62, which is a major route going north-south primarily on Freeport Boulevard with stops downtown at Sac City College and continuing south into uh, Pocket Greenhaven area. Um, 
This route has a minor change at the south end of the route. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the terminal would be changed, so the route would be a little shorter. The service south of Florin Road would be discontinued, and the last stop would be at uh, Florin and Greenhaven in the pocket area. Um, the weekday and Saturday service levels would be pretty similar, but we would be adding Sunday and holiday service on the Route 62, so it would finally have seven day a week service. The next route I'm going to cover is Route 65, which is shown here in green. It's an hourly route with no weekend service. And this route would be discontinued in the new network. And some of the route would be covered by other routes. The, south, the southern part of the route, which I'm focusing on here, would be primarily covered by the new Route 67. The eastern part of the route would not be covered by any new fixed routes, but we would be adding smart ride micro transit service to this area. So there would be dial -a ride service available for residents in the urbanized area here. And that's also in addition to the fact that we will still have um, north south service on Route 81. So to show you the new network, as discussed earlier, there would cease to be fixed route service east of 65th Street. The Route 81 would be the main option along 65th Street, but we would have dial -a ride service um, in this area, as well as areas south of here that we discussed earlier. The next route is Route 67. And today, Route 67 and 68 uh, provide service um, north-south through Oak Park with uh, combined service up to Arden Fair Mall via Cap City Freeway. And the service levels on these two routes would not really change. Um, they have seven day a week service, but the routing of these two routes would change a little. You can see again here that uh, they have the same route from Arden Fair Mall uh, through Midtown by Sutter Hospital with a stop at uh, 29th Street Light Rail service. But then uh, as they go south through Oak Park, uh, Route 67 splits off to the west and has service on Franklin Boulevard. Uh, 68 jogs through Oak Park by MLK Boulevard, uh, 14th Avenue and 44th Street. And then they both continue south past Fruit Ridge Road. And then they both converge at their southern end at Sunrise Mall. In the new network, uh, these two routes would continue to have that same service from Arden Fair Mall um, along Cap City Freeway through Midtown at Sutter Hospital. But uh, instead of diverging, they would have the same route going through uh, Oak Park or Northern Oak Park. So both the 68 and the 67 would go um, down Broadway to Martin Luther King Boulevard and they both would continue south on Martin Luther King Boulevard. So the 67 would no longer be operating on Northern Franklin Boulevard. Uh, it would be combined with the 68 and they both would run um, on MLK Boulevard. And the map here shows them both in blue but because, um, because they'd be running every other bus, this would actually be frequent 15-minute service until the point here at Fruit Ridge Road where they split. And here at Fruit Ridge Road, the 67 would continue south and would go south along Franklin Boulevard all the way to the light rail station. And this would cover uh, parts of Route 54 as well as parts of Route 65. And the new 68 would continue uh, from Fruit Ridge Road East and then down 44th Street and along 47th Avenue. And its terminal would remain at uh, Florin Mall. There's one other change to mention on these two routes and that is at the north end. In this map I've deactivated uh, the Route 129 or the 29 Express Service that is, as it is today to illustrate that the new Route 68 
would be extended east from Arden Fair Mall and the new terminal would be um, in the vicinity of Arden Way and Morse Avenue. So this would provide service along the retail corridor of Arden Way. Uh, today this service is provided by Route 22 which runs only hourly. By extending Route 68 down Arden Way this will provide seven day a week service along um, this major retail corridor as well as to uh, the Kaiser Morse Hospital. Um, and it's also important to note that with uh, the service as we have it today with Route 22, which to remind everyone, Route 22 is this hourly route along Arden Way. With the current Route 22 service, um, it provides direct service to uh, the Arden Del Paso light rail station. But if you want to go into downtown, it requires a transfer to the 67 or the 68. And in the new network, because this would be part of the 68, uh, customers would be able to ride from Arden Way uh, directly into downtown or midtown and vice versa. So the next route is Route 72, which is a seven day a week route. We have uh, 30 minute weekday service. And this is a popular route for us. It's a, a well used, efficient route. The only changes to Route 72 are that we'll be increasing the weekend frequency from 60 minutes to every 45 minutes. The next route is uh, Route 74, which is an hourly route with no weekend service, which runs uh, in and out of Rancho Cordova, south of Highway 50. And I'm also going to talk about Route 75, which runs from the Mather Light Rail Station onto uh, Mather Air Force Base and Mather Business Park. And in the new system, these two routes will essentially be combined. I'm also going to highlight um, one of our Rancho Cordovan routes that we operate as part of our service contract with the city of Rancho Cordova. You can see on the existing map that uh, Route 177 in pink provides uh, peak hour only service into Rancho Cordova and this this serves this primarily serves business parks and employment centers in Rancho Cordova off the Zinfandel corridor. I'll jump now to our new network and you can see in our new network that we continue to have service from Route 177. That's unchanged. But we've combined Route 74 and Route 75 and we've eliminated the service uh, east of Zinfandel Drive that we currently provide hourly with the 74. The new route we've called Route 74 and because we're serving a shorter area we'd be able to run it more frequently. This would have uh, seven day a week service every 30 minutes. Um, the way in which we've combined the routes is that uh, we've had it run, currently Route 74 runs along International Drive and it's Route 75 that enters um, the, uh, the business park property at Mather. Uh, in the new route, we've combined these two routes. Uh, we tend to have a lot of ridership uh, both at the VA Medical Center and at housing and employment job training in uh, Mather Park. So we've, we've retained those key destinations and we've retained the service on Route 74 primarily along Data Drive where you can see from the overhead um, we have a lot of uh, apartments and we get a lot of riders today. And so in the new system we'd be able to provide more frequent service where we're currently seeing good ridership and the parts where we have lower ridership in Eastern Rancher Cordova um, they would still be covered by the Cordovan. It's important to note also um, that the service on Folsom Boulevard uh, west of the Mather Light Rail Station, uh, this is currently provided by Route 28. We'd be changing that to Route 74 and that's important because the new Route 74 um, not only has more frequent service every 30 minutes but it's a seven day a week route so uh, people who want to go to the library on the weekends will now have um, a weekend route available to them through the 74. 
The next route I'm going to talk about is Route 80. Route 80 is one of our major routes that runs uh, hourly along Watt Avenue. You can see it here in green. Although it's a green hourly route, it's combined currently with Route 84, which you can see here, the north end and the south end. The entire Route 84 runs uh, a similar pattern to the Route 80. These two routes combine um, to provide hourly service in North Highlands and then on uh, Watt Avenue with them running uh, kind of in unison they they provide 30-minute service along Watt Avenue. And then Route 80 serves the La Riviera Drive. Route 84 has a direct shot on Watt Avenue to the light rail station. In the new system uh, Route 80 would be discontinued and there would be only Route 84 along Watt Avenue. So Route 84, as you can see here, would be a straight shot on Watt Avenue and it would run every 30 minutes. So the frequency along Watt Avenue would still be every 30 minutes. Instead of having an hourly 80 and an hourly 84, we just have Route 84 running every half hour. And then the key difference is in North Highlands um, if you see this area here, in the new network, we'd be running all blue routes with 30-minute service. You can see in the existing network that the North Highlands area has 60-minute service. And that's by virtue of the fact that we use two hourly routes to get 30-minute service on Watt Avenue, but they branch out in North Highlands. Well, what we found is that our ridership in North Highlands is actually very strong. So in the new network, we wanted 30-minute service on all our corridors in North Highlands. And that's what you have in the new plan, which is, uh, like I said, Route 84, running every 30 minutes. And as I mentioned earlier, Route 26 would be the new route that also serves the Watt Avenue corridor. Uh, next route I'm going to cover is Route 81. We're going back to the south area. I'm going to zoom back out and we'll look here at the south area once again. Uh, route 81 is a major route, uh, primarily on Florin Road and 65th Street. It has 30-minute uh, service today along the 65th Street section, but along the Florin Road section it actually has 15-minute uh, service. And in the new network, we'll be doing things a little differently. Um, the route will be very similar. It'll be primarily along 65th Street and Florin Road. However, on Florin Road, it will only run um, every 30 minutes. But that doesn't mean that uh, the number of buses on Florin Road will go down because, as I mentioned earlier, Route 55 is also going to be on uh, Florin Road. So with these two routes combined, there will actually still be a bus every 15 minutes on Florin Road but you'll be able to choose from the Route 55, which will go south down to Kasumas River College, or the Route 81, which will go north up to 65th Street and Sac State. The next route I'll discuss is in the northeast area, in the Arden Arcade area, and that's Route 82. Route 82 is shown here in blue. It's a 30-minute route with seven-day-a-week service. Uh, ridership is good on this route. And uh, we're making a few minor routing changes, but the main change to this route is simply that we'll be improving headways on the weekend to every 45 minutes. Um, in the new network, you'll see that the new route has been simplified a little. It mostly serves the same bus stops and same destinations, but in the area off of, uh, off of Whitney Avenue, we've straightened the route out a little. We found that some of the turns on the old route were kind of time consuming and they were vestiges of uh, service we used to run to a hospital in this area that, that no longer exists. So the new network should be a little straighter and faster and more direct. Uh, I mentioned already Route 84 when I talked about Route 80, so I'm going to skip now to Route 86, which will take us over to the North Sacramento area. This is the existing network. 
and the existing 86 runs every 30 minutes. It's a seven day a week route. Ridership is strong on this route. Um, the only major changes to this route are that we'll improve the headways on the weekends to every 40 minutes. Next we have Route 87, which operates primarily on Howe Avenue. This again is another strong route. Um, we have good ridership on it. We run seven days a week. We have 30 minute week weekday service. And again here we'll be improving the weekend headways to every 40 minutes, which will just add a few more trips in each direction for customers. And next we have Route 88, which primarily serves West El Camino in North Sacramento. And this again is another route that has strong ridership. Uh, it's a productive route for us. And there's not gonna be any changes to the route. We are only going to be improving the weekend headways to every 40 minutes. So next we're going to Route 93, which brings us back to the Northeast area in Citrus Heights. The existing Route 93 is kind of this diagonal route that goes through Foothill Farms. Um, it originates at the Watt I-80 light rail station, uh, and it travels um, northeast, it crosses I-80, goes into Citrus Heights, and goes up to our terminal at Lewis and Orlando where we transfer with Placer County Transit and Roseville Transit. The new route, which I will pan to here, the new Route 93 has similar levels of service. It's still a 30 minute route. It still has 70 or seven days a week service, uh, but we've changed the routing a little bit. It's the same in the southern half. It starts at the Watt I-80 light rail station. It goes northeast, but uh, instead of crossing I-80 at Greenback, it'll continue northeast up to Antelope Road. And this is actually going to cover a portion of territory that we currently serve with Route 95. Um, and I will jump back to our existing network. It helps to understand the existing Route 95 is an hourly route, uh, no evening service, no weekend service. And one of the things we said with this route was it, it serves, uh, neighborhoods where there is transit demand, but by nature of the routing, it's not very useful to people because it doesn't quite go far enough. There's a gap between it and the North Highlands area. A lot of people tend to want to go to light rail or retail or social services along Watt Avenue, and strong routes tend to have um, connectivity from one area to another. So what we've done in the new network, and I'll zoom to a similar zoom here so you can see the comparison, in the new network, uh, that portion of Antelope Road that's covered by the existing 95, this would be covered by the new 93. But this, the new 93 would become more of a major corridor radial route going um, to and from light rail um, and connecting several different communities with both residential and, and retail. And we're nearing the end here of our routes, but this is a good time to illustrate how uh, collectively, in the Northeast area, um, we go from sort of a disorderly system where, where we're running Route 95 and it's maybe not as efficient as it could be, to more of an orderly system where uh, through the city of Citrus Heights, we have these three major routes, Route 21, Route 25, and Route 93, all of which would have seven day a week service, all of which would run every 30 minutes which kind of fan out from one central destination and cover the city with, uh, with major destinations. Uh, 93 would go to the Blue Line, the 25 would go to uh, Mercy San Juan Hospital, American River College, and eventually south onto the Blue Line. And the 21 would go by Sunrise Mall and down to the Gold Line. So that covers the 93. Uh, we've discussed also Route 95. Uh, that brings us to uh, what in the existing system today is the Route 103, which is this pink route. And Route 103 would essentially be unchanged. Uh, all we've really done is we've changed the numbering to 193 uh, to indicate that it's kind of a freeway express version of the 93. 
and uh, 93 riders uh, will notice that the existing 93, of course, covers um, Auburn Boulevard in Citrus Heights. And by moving the 93 over to the Antelope side of the freeway, um, this part of Auburn Boulevard is, of course, covered by Route 25. But uh, for people who want to go uh, from Auburn Boulevard direct to Watt I-80 light rail uh, for jobs downtown, um, the 25 won't do that because the 25 um, has a longer, uh, longer route to light rail. So the 193, by keeping the 193 here, um, peak hour commuters will retain that direct service from Auburn Boulevard in Citrus Heights direct to light rail. Um, the last route I'll discuss is Route 109. It's one of our longest routes. It's shown here in pink. It's a peak only route um, that picks up in uh, Orangevale and goes downtown by way of Highway 50. And ridership on it is strong, so we're not proposing any changes to it. And uh, lastly, um, I won't be discussing at length our jibe service in uh, North Natomas. And I touched briefly on our Rancho Cordovan service, uh, Route 177, but we do run two other pink, peak-only routes in Rancho Cordova. Um, these are all services that we provide on behalf of clients that pay us for these services, so these weren't really part of the project. So this project focuses primarily on fixed route bus service. Uh, smart ride micro transit service is not a key focal area of this project, but it's important to note that there are a number of areas uh, where in the new network we would be shrinking our coverage in our service area. And many of those areas, not all of them, but many of those areas uh, would be served by our smart ride micro transit service. We have plans to uh, add new coverage zones for that service uh, to provide a little extra coverage where fixed route service would be discontinued. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that was useful. Uh, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us, shoot us an email, or give us a call. Uh, if you have a group and you'd like us to come make a presentation, we're happy to come out, uh, do a presentation, Q&A, etc. Thanks, James. It's a lot of great information, and we thank you for taking the time to listen to us today for this very important project. And there are a number of ways you could reach us at RT. You can write us, you can call us, you can email us, you can follow us on social media. RT staff will be out riding on all of our bus routes to inform riders of the proposed changes, and we will also be at some of our busiest transit centers and bus stops. So until then, uh, keep checking the website and social media for all the latest information on SAC RT4. Thank you.